Uh, this is a vid video tutorial for river meander migration modeling in the IRIC platform. And this is video tutorial number five. <clears throat> and it's entitled Calibration Adding to a Polygon Erodibility Map. So, first of all, a bit of review as this tutorial builds on previous tutorials. So, I'm going to remind you where we're coming from, and of course I need to remind myself too. Uh, we are in the middle of calibrating a model. We've set ourselves that task, and we've decided to do it on a single bend on the Sacramento River. Now, in order to predict migration, and there's a little review here, uh, we need to specify how fast or slow the river migrates through the landscape. And we model this by setting what we call an erosion field. And we have what we might call a variable erosion field in which the value of erodibility differs at every location in space. Now we began our creation of a variable erodibility field by making a background. That is, the entire background over which the river segment runs and has migrated in the past, and over which we expect any predictions to run. And in a previous tutorial, we set this background erosion coefficient to a certain value. Uh, that, of course, doesn't appear to be a variable erosion field because it's all one value, but this tutorial will now make it variable. Okay. Now, if you'll recall, and I will review, we made that background erodibility field by creating what we call a polygon erodibility map. Uh, and we do that in IRIC. And we tested how well it worked by running the model, and we adjusted the value to make it work better. And then we also used the coefficient of friction to continue to adjust our calibration so that the modeled migration and the observed migration uh, matched as closely as possible using what we called a target center line. Okay? So, what are we going to do now? We've reviewed what we've, where we've come from, and now I'm going to tell you where we're going to go. In this tutorial, we're going to take the next step in calibrating, which is we're going to add to that background erodibility. Now, I, I, my casual words there, we're going to add to the erodibility, uh, have a kind of a hidden meaning. Uh, whatever we put on top of the previous polygon will replace the value in that polygon. So that's how we start to make the field variable, like a layer cake. And the layer on top takes precedence over what's underneath. Okay? Okay. First of all, we have to kind of uh, figure out what we want to do next. And that, as you'll see here, I'm saying historical data. We need to kind of, we look at the model performance, and we'll look at that first, and then we'll look at historical data, and then we'll decide how we'd like to change that. And then we're going to add polygons to try and resolve our issues. Well, let's see what our uh, previous calibration looked like. Here we have uh, the dotted lines are our target. That's what we're aiming for. And that green line is the results of our previous calibration. We can discuss it forever and uh, it would be great and fun to discuss how well it actually works and why it works that way, but ah, it's important to move on, okay? Okay. Uh, one of the things that we do notice is that right in this area, as it moves to the west, there's a significant discrepancy uh, with the observed. And one way to consider that is to look at some historic migration. So first of all, I'll turn that off. And I think I will turn that one off too. Okay, now we're going to look at historic migration. 
and uh, you watch the screen and I'll read out the years. Here's 1870, 1887, 1896, 1904, 1938, 1942, 1952. I'll pause for a minute here. Uh, even by 1952, you can see we're starting to see a pattern. I'm going to continue, uh, but uh, here's the area where we're having some problem, and you see what's happening. I'll continue. 66, 76, 87, 97, 2004. Okay. Now, let's put our first prediction that we had made on top of all this spaghetti. And it pretty much disappears into everything except in this area. So, our prediction goes where no channel has gone for over the last 140 years. The next thing we got to do is figure out what we want to do about this. Well, why don't we just work with erodibility factors so we make it so that it won't erode where it hasn't been for the last 140 years. Okay, we're going to turn to adding polygons to take care of this situation. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to do is bring IRIC up. I've already started it. Uh, there we have uh, the original center line, 1942, in blue. And we have our dotted one, which is our target, or 1987. And um, we have this model set up with the calibration vectors that uh, we established before. Now the only thing we need to do in using this particular setup is, as usual, uh, we need to go and establish our output. Okay? Now, got to as you might see here, I have a rather difficult way of establishing output files, and this is something that will need to be automated. But for now, I have this method. It's absolutely vital to name things and keep track of your names. As you can see on the screen, you might run 50 or 100 different calibration runs. So it's critical that you have proper naming so you can follow through. Now that's, uh, that's the name of the file. Okay, and we're going to make sure that we're going to save to that file. Okay. Oh, I don't want to discard them. I want to save and close. Okay, there we go. Well, now we need to make that extra polygon. And that's pretty easy, actually. Um, if you'd seen a previous tutorial, we made the background polygon. Now I'm going to enlarge this. And look at the area that we want to calibrate in here. And I want to add a polygon that will keep it from migrating in this direction. And I, I looking closely at the historical data, that line needs to go right about through there. So I'm going to make a single polygon that's uh, take in that whole area. So as before, we start to make a polygon. Now in this case, you want to be pretty close to the channel, but you don't want to overlap over the channel because that will hold it in place in a way that ultimately isn't useful.
Yeah, this is the area that's key here. Now, I need to make this. Uh, I'm going to set the value for erosion at one, two, three, four, five nines, which is what our methodology is for something that doesn't move. Now, I'm actually not done with that. I want to edit it a little bit. So, and enlarge it. But I wanted to save it before I moved on here. So, I will make sure that I have that picked. And I'm going to add some vertices here. that I can then use in my drawing. Okay. Bring this down here. Okay, that's going to be enough. Okay. Now, it's important always to name these. Now let's check the value just to make sure. The rotability is five nines. We'll put a name on this and we'll call it Western Restraint um, Video. Okay. Now I'm going to save that by exporting it and uh, there I have it um, put the name in Western Restraint Video Western Restraint Video okay And before I move on to doing the actual run and seeing how well our current calibration works, I have developed the habit of doing two things. Basically, saving my conditions of this particular run so that in case this run is just fabulous, I know what the values were when I did it. Um, the first thing is, although I had saved this particular polygon, you can save the entire erodibility uh, conditions by exporting all polygons. And what I've taken to doing is I have taken to putting them in the output folder. So here's the output folder that I had just made. And I'm going to call this Erosion field for video. So I know that that particular run had those erosion conditions. I can always find them. That should be automated so that every time you do a run, that would be saved automatically. It'd save us going through these. Uh, these steps. Likewise, calculation condition. As you know, there's all of these almost dozen things, each of them having number of factors that can be changed here. How do you know which ones you used for a certain run? Well, what I have taken to doing is exporting this file, a CGNS file, which will be, which will capture everything in one of those dialog boxes. So, we want to make sure that we put it in the right place and I'm putting it in the output for this run. Now, the proper name for it actually would be this name. Copy this name, get in there, put it there. 
that would have been the name for the erosion field too. Okay, we have everything saved now. It's time to do our run. Here we go. There we go. Now, I'll show you how I am importing it into my GIS. Let's get rid of that to begin with. And we can turn back on our target. That's what we're trying to get to. That's our previous line of calibration. Now, we're going to import. Whoops. And where we have to go is to that output folder. And again, what I do is I take the name of the output folder and have it copied. So I have the name of the output folder copied. And I grab the final center line and I bring it in. And before I do anything else, it's got that generic name that would not help me. By tomorrow, I wouldn't even remember what it is. But I put that name in. And that gives it an absolutely unique name. And then we set some properties here. There we go. So, the blue one is our new revised uh, calibration run. And the green one is the old one. Now, the blue one is better in many ways. Many ways. I will uh, leave it at that and bring in a summary here. This is going to end our tutorial on adding a polygon to the background, a rotability map. Now we have one that's actually variable in space. So, in summary, we started off with our very first shot at calibration, which dealt with the background, which, if you will, was a sort of an average value of erosion. And it worked okay. But in this tutorial, we refined our calibration by taking into account site-specific conditions. Now, in this particular case, we weren't pre exactly sure what was restraining the channel from moving west, but we saw, saw from the historic maps that it was restrained. So we were able to simulate the restraints by adding polygons. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please contact us.